Hey guys! <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Tiffany and this is like my first talk through tutorial that I've done in probably like a good two or three years. I'm kind of nervous but um, I already went through the entire tutorial. I'm just filming the intro now so I think it went pretty well. I don't think I should feel like that nervous but yeah, I'm going to be doing a hair and makeup tutorial today. I have a Zoom meeting that I need to get ready for. So I actually already had the meeting. I'm just filming this after the fact. But I'm going to show you guys how like my getting ready process. I did my hair and my makeup. Showed you guys how to get this like cute little messy bun here. And I did a cute little makeup look. So I just thought I'd show you guys like how I got all of the stuff together. This video is sponsored by Julie Hair Company. They provided the hair that I used to create this little cute bun here. So shout out to them for sending over this hair and sponsoring this video. We appreciate a good hair sponsor. I just thought I'd come in and show you guys, you know, how I got ready for this meeting and everything, but I feel like it went really well. And um, I can't really talk much about it, at least I don't think so. Before I get started, I just want to quickly apologize to you guys for any like type of audio issues that might be you know going down in this tutorial i'm not using my like the mic that i use for my voiceovers i'm literally using the mic that's on my camera i haven't used that in years i don't even know if it works i could have done this whole entire video and you know it be pointless because the mic doesn't even work i have no idea i just know it's not going to be the same quality as like the audio from my normal mic that i use but anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys want to see how I got this hair and makeup look, then just go ahead and keep on watching. Hey guys! So yeah, we're doing a talk through today. I'm going to start off with my hair first and then I'll get into like makeup and everything like that. I can't believe it's taken me this long to do a talk through tutorial. Like seriously, this is kind of insane. I'm like low-key, like kind of nervous, but we're going to be okay. We're going to be okay. So I'm going to do my hair first. I want to do like a curly like messy bun type thing so I already have like my hair like straightened out and everything so uh, for anybody asking I don't have locks anymore I still get questions about like whether or not I have locks I don't have locks anymore this is what my hair is looking like my natural hair uh, I don't have like a perm or anything like my hair is just like blown out and straightened with a flat iron. Okay, let's just go ahead and get started because I'm on a time constraint. I'm supposed to do a video call later on today, so I'm not even sure like what I'm going to be doing like, with my makeup and all that other stuff, but I just know that I want to do a like curly bun, like high bun or something and like do my edges and everything like that. Anyways, yeah, let's get into it. So I am going to be using hair extensions for this style because I don't want to use my natural hair. I want to keep it straight. I'm going to try and do some cornrows later on, like either today or tomorrow to uh, like have it, you know, all flat and everything for a wig install. I'm going to just, you know, put my hair in a ponytail, put it in a little bun or whatever, and then add some extensions to make it fun. So the hair that I'm going to be using is from Dewey Hair Company. I've been using this company's hair for a very long time. I think this is like our third or fourth, I don't even know anymore, but I have a couple of videos with their hair and I really like it. So I'm using their hair today. Shout out to them for sponsoring this video, yeah! I'm going to be using their hair today and um, this is the hair that we're going to be using for our bun. It is their kinky curly hair. And oh my gosh, I'm so in love with this hair, guys. It's so pretty. I'm low-key about to probably do like a sew-in with this hair and do like some leave out like towards the front because it's literally like almost spot on to like my curl pattern. Like it's not too far off from my curl pattern. And I feel like this would blend in like to my natural hair so well. I'm so glad that I straightened my hair too um, before doing this because it just makes doing a, a ponytail so much easier. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do my edges first actually. Or should I do my, my ponytail first? I don't know. Yeah, let me do my edges first. Let me start my edges first. We're, we're just gonna put this up into a ponytail just to kind of get it out the way and see, you know, everything. Yeah guys, I don't have locks anymore. I don't have them. They're all gone. I definitely want to, to, to do them again, but I have to get them done by like a professional. Like the last time I had locks, I had them, I took them out because they were the wrong size. They were just too, um, they were just too big. 
and I did them myself so the parting in the back was all wrong like they weren't laying flat and it was just a mess it was, <laughs> it was a mess I definitely want to do them over again but I want to have like a professional do them you know so they're done correctly and um, they're all the same size like I still have my little my little rat tail here there, there's still that lock so I think like I I want to have them you know like about this size because I, I like the size of this one so I think I want to have them that size. I definitely want to do lock extensions too, like permanent lock extensions. My hair is the same length as this lock, but uh, I don't know. I, I probably just want to do like extensions just to make sure that they're the same length because I feel like once I lock my hair again, it probably won't be this long. Like I think it ha would have to, you know, kind of grow into this length, especially if I get a haircut, you know. I'm going to do my edges first and I'm going to use this Kiss Colors and Care Edge Fixer and this one is in the scent Grape. I've been loving these. They smell so awesome. These are the uh, the edge controls that Sweetie came out with with Kiss. Oh my gosh, they smell so good. <laughs> definitely want to get lock extensions. That idea was definitely inspired by Willow Smith. I love how she, you know, had her lock extensions and then she kind of transitioned into having like her her natural locks out. I know a lot of you guys are probably like, dang Tiff, like what took you so long to get to do like a talk and a tutorial and stuff? Like we've been waiting for you. I remember when I first started my channel, like when I first started, I think it was like back in like 2011, 2012-ish, like between like 2011 and 2013. I'm not exactly, exactly sure like what year I started, but it was around that time that I did like my very, very first tutorial. Like during that time, like Jaclyn Hill, and people like um i think juicy star juicy star or something all that glitters jackie Ina was like amazing back then and well she still is now obviously they all seem to have like these very like vibrant like personalities and stuff and i never felt you know that was me like you know my personality I've always felt like I've been kind of kind of dry, like I have a very like dry personality. Back then I just didn't feel very like confident in like my own personality and how it would come off like to people on camera. I just figured, you know what, I'm just gonna stick to, to the makeup and focus on the makeup. Like that's what I, you know, am passionate about anyways. Things like I've changed, you know, since then. I'm definitely not that same like insecure person that I was when I first started my channel. I remember telling a friend of mine back then like, you know, I don't think that I have like the the personality to be <laughs> to be on like YouTube like that. I'm very uh, like to myself, like I'm very like reserved. I don't, I don't feel like I have a very like larger than life personality. And, you know, I just didn't think that, you know, anybody would really care to like stick around and watch. I, I never really thought that this this would kind of like, this channel would really amount to anything when I first started. The channel is growing, I'm growing, you know, it's time to, you know, make some changes, you know, with growth comes, comes changes. In order to, you know, continue to grow, we got to make those changes or else you're just going to stay stagnant. There's one thing that Patrick Starr said like years ago that kind of like stuck with me, but he said that life opens up when you do. It's very true, like over the course of, you know, me, me growing up and everything, you know, I've definitely seen how positive things can come into your life when you just, you know, open up and you, you know, you don't like close yourself to everything. Oh my gosh, I didn't even realize, ah, oh goodness, I need to buy a mic now. Right now I'm using the mic off the camera but I'm gonna assume that it's pretty terrible. So I definitely gotta, gotta buy a mic now. So I'm trying to kind of gauge like how I want my edges to look because I don't even know how to describe like what I'm going for. Yeah, I'll just say this. I've been super into um, the way that Lori Harvey does her edges. Now I don't have like her hairline, like my hairline doesn't look like hers. So of course it's not gonna look exactly like hers. But I do like take a lot of inspiration from the way that she styles her edges. I think it's like very, it's very like soft, but it's still, you can still tell that she like does something to them. I'm trying to like stay off of social media as much as I possibly can because it has me feeling like all kinds of like just depressed and everything. Like, everything that's, you know, is going on, especially when it comes to the Black Lives Matter movement, like 
just it's and, and the, the crazy thing is it's like it's nothing new it's it's not it's not new you know it's not like oh my gosh like all of a sudden you know black people are getting killed out in the streets you know for no reason and all this other stuff it's 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 not new like this has been happening for forever the thing is is that it's now all over social media like it can be like very you know traumatizing to to watch like especially if you're just watching seeing it over and over and over and over again like it's very it's very traumatizing it's gotta try and do your best to to limit like what you're what you're seeing edge control on I'm going to go in with some hair gel this is the girl is not hair gel I chose the yellow one because I remember SZA re responded to someone's comment about like you know what hair gel she used to do her edges and she said she uses the girl is not hair gel the yellow one so I was like oh it's actually really good I like that hair gel a lot before I was using the um, the got to be ultra glued hair gel, like the one that comes in the black tube. One of the reasons why I like this one better too is because I feel like I can use this by itself. Like today I'm using it over an edge control, but I feel like with this one I can use it on its own and it has like the same like, you know, hold as if I was using, you know, a edge control and hair gel. I'm only going to use a little bit because this stuff is very like, I had to get used to the texture. Like look at this. You see that? It's very like like gummy. <laughs> it's a, it's really strange. Like I remember when I first tried it, I was like, Ugh. I'm not gonna change the style of anything. I'm gonna keep it exactly the same. I'm just gonna go over it with the hair gel so that way it doesn't um like lift. Because with just for my hair texture, with just the edge control alone, like my hair never stays like put. Like as soon as I go out into like the heat or something or just after, you know, normal day activities, like my hair will start to, you know, come out of the style. nothing like Lori Harvey's edges. <laughs> I like how I went on a whole like, oh, I love her edges, and it's like, this doesn't even look anything like her. I'm gonna do a slow, slow dee -doo. Okay, so we have one side done. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side, because this one's it's not, you know. Not matching right now, so we're just gonna do the other side. So again, I'm just gonna go back in with my edge control, the edge fixer. I'm gonna use the watermelon one for this side because I kind of wanna, I don't wanna smell that one now. Use the watermelon one. I use the grape one for this side, so I'm gonna use the watermelon for the other side. about like my edges like as I'm doing them and like what looks good and stuff that's just the way that I am with everything though like I, I I'm like a super like attention to detail type person I don't, I don't know like I'm, I'm a bit of a perfectionist at times honestly it's it, it can be like a blessing and a curse it's like your your work turns out you know like good a lot of times but the process of it of it can be like super like stressful because you're just like it has to be perfect it has to be perfect you know what I mean it's like something that I've had to kind of like grow out of, especially when it comes to like my YouTube channel. Like I remember a lot of times in the past, like I would do film like makeup tutorials and stuff like that, or just videos in general. And I wouldn't even put it out just because I would look through the footage and I'd be like, man, this sucks. Like the makeup isn't right. Like I put way too much bronzer, you know, my eyeshadow isn't blended all the way. Just like, you know, things like that, like little stupid things that you know, probably wouldn't even matter to, to most people. But because I can see it, it's like, 
you know, it bothers me. Uh, over the years, I've kind of learned to be like less hard on myself. A lot of times, like, most people don't even notice. <laughs> like, I started to realize that it's kind of like, like just me in my own head, you know? Like, I, I get into my own head a lot. You know, I, I overthink things a lot. Like I said, it can be it can be a blessing, but it can also be like very much like detrimental to your growth. Not putting out your your work just because you know you you're so focused on it being perfect, but in reality, like nothing is ever really perfect. Even the looks that I feel like I've done that I I really really like, there's even in those looks, there's still something that I wish that I could have changed. So so it's like you know what's the difference? I'm noticing that I'm taking much longer. <laughs> to do this because I am like talking. So I'm gonna try and focus and zone in for a second. I'm gonna go in with my hair gel and we're just gonna slick down these like edges all over here. I have a little bald spot right over here. That was from when I used to do like sew-ins all the time. I used to do like my own sew-ins when I was in school. I was doing everything entirely too tight and eventually all of my hair fell off <laughs> in that area. Like all of my hair fell off here and all of it fell off over here. I had to like regrow it all back like it was awful. It was so awful. It's crazy the, you know, the transitions that, I, that I've gone through, you know, with my hair. All throughout middle school, elementary school, middle school, high school, my hair was permed. I think it was like the second summer, bef like the, yeah, like the second summer, so the summer before like my sophomore year of college, I did like a, a big chop. But it wasn't really like a big chop because it was actually like an, an actual hairstyle. I don't know if you guys remember, but Rihanna, she had like this, uh, this like tapered like pixie cut basically with like her fringe in the front. She had like a long, you know, like bang in the front. I was like obsessed with that haircut. Like I, I wanted that haircut so bad. So I ended up doing that haircut. I went to a stylist. I had my, all my hair cut off. Um, and um, that was like the biggest, basically the beginning of like me growing out my natural curls. So I have my ponytail. I'm going to basically braid it, secure it with an elastic band, and then wrap it around my ponytail. So I had my that haircut, and then I grew, started growing out my natural hair. Um, during that time, as I was growing out my natural hair, I basically wore sew-ins for like a good year and a half, and that was the time that I. Uh, pulled all of my edges out <laughs> so I was like bald underneath all my sew-ins for, for a while. I started doing like box braids, I did box braids for a while um, and I switched between like box braids, you know, sew-ins every now and again and you know wearing my afro out. I don't know if you guys remember the Beyonce like the upgrade you video but there was a time where I was like rocking like a super long like pony braided ponytail because of her. There was like a scene where she's like in her like her Rolls Royce or like Bentley or whatever car it is. I don't know what car it is. <laughs> she's like in this fancy like huge like luxurious car and she has like this super high ponytail with like this jumbo braid going off to the side and I remember like thinking like oh my gosh I have to recreate that so I ended up doing like that hairstyle <laughs> for a long time. That was so crazy. So now that my hair is done in like a bun right here, I have my bun, I'm gonna start installing, you know, my little wax here. I'm gonna pull the hair out of like the bundle. I'm just, that's basically what I'm doing right now. It's just kind of like stretching out the weft. And then I'm gonna wrap the weft around this bun and um, until I have like the amount of hair that I want to do like our curly bun. Oh, there was another time I did like genie locks. If you don't know what genie locks are, they're basically box braids, but instead of using like, synthetic hair or, um, you know, uh, 
human hair to do your box braids, you use yarn. The yarn basically creates like a lock effect. Like it makes your box braids look like locks. And that was the time too that I decided, you know, like locks is going to be like my end, the end of like all of my hairstyling. I spent three days on these genie locks. I was so proud of myself when I was finally done with them. They came out so good. And then I went to work the next day and I was so like proud of myself. I was like, look at my genie locks. They were like butt length and everything. <laughs> I remember going into work and like clocking in for my shift and everything. My manager, she like comes up to me and she says like, so you might have to change your hair, Tiffany. I basically learned that my job didn't think dreadlocks were an acceptable like hairstyle to wear to work. They were like basically against like the dress code. It didn't fit like the, the company's like aesthetic or whatever. And even though my hair was, like I said, like genie locks aren't necessarily locks, they're box braids. They're just made with yarn so they look like locks. Because they looked like locks, my manager pretty much told me like, oh, you might have to change your hair. It, it was so crazy because she didn't have an issue with the hair. Her thing was like, you need to be at work with like the company's clothes and that's it. Like, I don't really care about what your hair looks like. So she was like, I don't really care like about the hair. Like you can wear it. I'm just letting you know, like if a district manager, oh my gosh, I look crazy. Like, I'm just letting you know, if a district manager or somebody of higher up comes into the store, they might tell you to change your hair because it looks like locks. And I was just like, dang man. He's like, you can wear them if you want to. She was basically just letting you know, like giving me the, the heads up, you know, like someone might say something, you know, if they come into the store. So I ended up wearing my genie locks and I pretty much wore them until they were, you know, dead and gone and they looked messed up and it was just ready for them to come out. I can't even lie to you, during that time where I was wearing that hairstyle, I was low key kind of like scared. It's crazy like what you tolerate at the workplace when you don't have a lot of options to change your situation. I wore those things. Like, I was like, forget it. As long as my manager is cool with it, I'm wearing my genie locks. Forget that. But I can't lie to you. I was a little nervous. I think I have a little too much hair. Usually I would use two bundles to create this bun, but because this hair is a lot like curlier, I don't have to use two bundles. One is just fine. <laughs> the style it's kind of like you just gotta play around with it once you kind of figure out what works like you'll be able to like replicate the style over and over again so um i have like my bun here now i'm going to go back into like um redefining the curls at the ends so i'm going to use a little bit of hair gel this is the extreme styling gel and i picked this up from target i see a lot of like other youtubers use this gel for like their wash and goes and i tried using it on my natural hair for a wash and go and it's super amazing i like the how it like kind of defines my curls since this hair is very close to my curl pattern. I figured I'd just use this hair gel because I already know how. Yep, that's exactly what I want. See, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I'm not going to add it to like all of the hair, but I am going to add it to some of the, the ends. There's going to be a couple of pieces that I'm going to like hang loose like that to frame the face. That's when you know the FedEx guy comes to your house all the time. Like the package didn't even have my apartment number. And he was like, this is your apartment, right? Like, this is your package, right? You're Tiffany. And I'm like, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's me. That is me. like experimented my hair a lot. I, got, I just got bored very easily, you know what I mean? Even now I feel that way. I think that's the reason why I've been like holding off on doing like my locks all over again is because I know that I am I can go into these phases where I really want to change my hairstyle. With locks, it's like once you have them, it's kind of like it's a done deal, you know what I mean? Unless, you, unless you're ready to spend days or however long combing them out or just like chopping all of your hair off. And I know for me, like once I start them, 
I don't want to have to experience that. Once I have them, I feel like I'm going to be done, you know, with like my experimentation phase. So I just kind of want to get all of that out before I go into, you know, starting them all over again. I already know exactly who I want to do like my lock extensions. I believe her name is Simone on um, Instagram, but she literally, oh my gosh, like the way that she does like lock extensions, it's so cute. I believe she's based in Texas, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, Simone Protective Styles is her Instagram name. I don't know if you guys can see, but just check out her Instagram page. But I believe that she does like permanent lock extensions as well as temporary lock extensions. I, I just love her work so much. Like I think it's, it's, it's flawless. It just has this very like natural feel to it even though they're they're faux locks they just look so like like natural and like that's the that's what i want for like my lock extensions like i want them to to look natural like not like lock extensions <laughs> those ends are kind of like defined and everything i'm gonna pull them back so i'm just gonna pull a few strands here and there that's pretty much like what i do to create like my messy bun guys like i just kind of like play around with it at this point just kind of see like where I want hairs to fall. I love this hairstyle because it's like so ridiculously easy. I know that it took a long time here, but that's because like I'm trying to talk and stuff like that. Like as I'm doing my hair and then I need to grab things from like the bathroom and stuff to like actually do the style and stuff. So I'm, I'm like pausing like in between. So this is taking a lot longer than it would take that if I just was like focused on doing my hair and nothing else. And I'm pretty sure if I like didn't do like, you know, this type of like really styled edges, it'd probably take me even less time. I'm just gonna trim a few little spots so the hairs aren't so long and then I'll be done. It looks fine right now. I'm just like, you know, overanalyzing like I always do. <laughs> okay, I'm stopping. I'm stopping. Okay. I think you can probably do this with any like curl pattern. Like sometimes I'll use like a looser curl pattern. Uh, other times, like today, I'll use like a kinkier one. I think it just kind of depends on like what your, your preference is and like what kind of look you're going for. Yeah, bam. bam. That's the hair. I messed with the bun, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> so I pretty much just unraveled the bun that I already had, and then I added some product to the the curls, and I just redid the bun over. I looked at my hair like in the bigger mirror, like I something was just off, and I couldn't like tell why, like what it was. And I thought to myself, I was like, you know what? This bun looks a little bigger than like I normally have it. I wanted the curls to be a little bit more defined. So I just added some product to the hair when it was unraveled and then I just like did the bun all over again. Same steps that I took before so nothing really changed. I just added product to the hair. <sighs> I know I said I wouldn't like mess around with the hair but sometimes you gotta just trust your instincts, you know what I mean? But anyway, so now I'm officially done with hair. I, I like the way the bun looks, it's just cute, it has a nice little size to it, like the curls look cute and defined and everything. So now I'm just gonna add my satin scarf here. And don't forget that the hair that I use is also going to be down below in the description box, like all the info for it. So if you have a question about like the hair that I use for this bun, just make sure to check the description box. I'll have all the information down below over there. So I'm going to add my scarf just so it keeps my edges protected and in place while I do my makeup. Oh man, I really wanted to do a like colorful look today, but I don't know if I have time. I'm supposed to go on like a Zoom call um, at three and I don't know, if, it's already like 1.30 and usually for like those like colorful cut crease looks, but I like to like take my time. So I might just do something more like simple. We'll see. I'm just like cleaning up my table here so I can get ready to do like my makeup. But I have like about an hour and a half to do something. But I move like a turtle when it comes to like my makeup. I really try hard to like move at like a decent pace, but it just never works out that way. Makeup is like therapy for me. So I don't like to like rush it. Yeah. So I think I'm gonna do something um, really soft for the makeup today. Kind of like fresh and everything, fresh and clean. So fresh and so clean, clean. Oh no, I have a pimple burning on my chin. Hmm. 
This is the Too Faced Lip Injection Maximum Pump Lip Pumper. I'm going to, uh, well I already did, um, add this onto my lips. Let's start off with moisturizer. This is the Wishful Honey Balm Jelly Moisturizer. I'm giving myself an hour to do my makeup. So it's 1.30 now. I want to just kind of finish this until, until 2.30. here it already is like starting to hurt and it's like that oh I see these are the these are the type that keep giving me these like dark marks right here they're like the under the skin type that's like the kind of bump that forms like right here I don't know if you guys can see there's like a slight shadow there but these are the kind that keep giving me like these dark marks I don't know where they're coming from like why they're popping up like what's going on like I don't, I don't know what it is but I'm so over it but honestly like I'm just so freaking tired of it. So now I'm just gonna go in with some primers here. I'm gonna use the Stilla One Step Correct Eye Correcting and what? The Stilla One Step Correcting and Brightening Serum. This is a color corrector for the under eye. So I'm just gonna use like a little pump of that. It's like a peachy color, but it kind of goes on a lot more translucent than you think. It acts as like a really good base for like your concealer and stuff like that. Then for skin to prime, I'm going to use the Farsali Skin Tune Filler. I haven't used this baby in a long time, but she is bad, bad, bad. I'm sorry if there's like a lot of noise going on, guys. Like I just turned on the AC. I was trying to avoid turning it on to, because it's kind of loud, but it's just so hot. Like. And then there's like a guy with a leaf blower outside now. But it's just so hot. Like in California, it's like ridiculously hot. The other day, it was 106 degrees. Like, what the heck? <laughs> yeah, now there's a guy with a leaf, a leaf blower outside, so. Yay! Like at this point, if you still don't believe global warming is a thing, like, I don't know what to tell you. Like, Okay, that guy's coming really, really close with this leaf blower, so I'm just gonna do like, my skin. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> okay, I think he's going away now. So yeah, we went in with some skin tune blur from Farsali. We're gonna go in with the Farsali liquid powder next. I love this stuff so much. Like, I just need like a lifetime supply of this because honestly, this is like one of the few things that controls my oil, like my oily T-zone for the whole entire day. The last thing that, that controlled my oils this well was milk of magnesia. <laughs> And I'm definitely not going back to that. I think there was a primer from Becca, the Becca Evermat, I think it was. Um, that one was pretty good, but you know, I just didn't really care too much for how it looked, you know, once you started putting on your foundation. Like some, a lot of times I had like this weird experience where it would kind of like ball up or like separate. And I couldn't understand like what I was doing wrong. It wasn't like I was going in with like a lot of product either. I would use like a really small amount, but for some reason it just never really um, worked underneath like my foundation. Sorry I'm like dogging Becca like that. But I'm gonna go in with some foundation. Let me uh, dampen up my beauty blender real quick. Beauty blender is damp. I'm gonna use the Ride or Die foundation. This is the Beauty Bakery, oh she's dirty, oh no, poor baby. She's the Beauty Bakery Insta Bake Aqua Glass Foundation. I think I'm gonna do a mixture of 317W and 319N. Wow, I haven't used a beauty blender like directly on my skin like this in so long. Usually I'll apply my foundation first with a brush and then I'll use my beauty blender to blend it out. Ooh, this looks so good. Oh, I love this foundation so much. It never fails me. I never have to worry about it looking funky. <laughs> like it, it always looks good. 
no matter like what condition my skin is in if it's dry if it's oily like doesn't it doesn't matter like it always looks good yeah it looks great mm -hmm. foundation it builds up really well like you can add a, another layer onto it it never looks like cakey <laughs> it always looks you know like your skin but better type and i like the fact that it's not like too too matte you know you can really go either direction with this foundation like make it look more dewy or go for like a dewy look or you can go for like a matte look like it sets with powders really well. I swear, this foundation just makes me so happy. I just love products that work, you know what I mean? Like, I like products that do what they say they're gonna do. Like, don't lie to me, you ain't gotta lie. You know, if, you're, if your product isn't transfer proof or water resistant or if it's not, you know, creamy or if it's not you know, matte or something, you don't gotta lie about it, it's okay. Like, that's what turn, turns me off more than like the actual product. It's like products that say they're gonna do something and then they actually don't do it. Wow, this looks really good. I'm gonna have to go back to using a beauty blender or like a sponge in general to like blend in a foundation. So that's good. I'm then going to, we're gonna go in with concealer next. I'm gonna use the beauty blender bounce airbrush liquid with liquid wick concealer. I'm gonna use the lightest color that they sent over. So this is, 4.10 CO, other known as tan suede. And we're gonna add that to the under eyes. Oh no, 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 I don't like it. Mm -mm. That's just the wrong shade. The formula is very thick though. I like the formula already. Well, maybe, I don't know. Okay, so here's what we'll do. We're gonna go in with the C shade the 4.1 tan suede basically and I'm gonna go underneath the eyes and I'm just gonna go like right here I was gonna use this concealer to like do all of like my highlighting and then I usually like to use like another concealer that's like even lighter to do like my brightening but um I think I'm going to just use this to do like my under eyes we'll see how it blends it looks like it blends okay. Oh, that's actually really nice. Never mind, I like it. Okay. I thought it was gonna be too cool, like too pink. And then for the edges, I'll go in with the the bottom of the beauty blender and just go over the edges. I blended my foundation out with this side, so it's just gonna make it blend in a lot easier. That doesn't look bad at all. I actually really like that shade. Okay, so we're gonna go in with the same shade, tan suede, and I'm just gonna brighten everywhere else. Like it's blending in really well. The coverage is really nice. I definitely want to get a couple shades that are like slightly lighter. A shade that's like exactly like this one that I'm using, but more of a golden, like a yellowy type of tone. I'm gonna go in with a second layer concealer, but this time I'm gonna use the Too Faced Born This Way Multi-Use Sculpting Concealer in the shade Cookie. This one is kind of like the shade that I would want in the Beauty Blender concealer. See how much like more yellowy it is? It's like way more golden, but not as, as bright as this one. I would probably go with something just slightly darker. I'm not gonna take this like all the way underneath the eyes. I like to keep that extra brightness like right in here.
So concealer is looking good. So I'm gonna go ahead and start setting everything with powder. Pretty vulgar, the powder room setting powder. I'm gonna go in with the same beauty blender that I just used for my um, blending. I'm gonna knock off all of that extra powder. We don't need it. I'm going to set the under eyes first. And I'm just gonna press that in until that powder disappears. Once that's done, I'm just gonna move on to the other side. to set everything so I can add my powder bronzer, my blush, and I have like a smooth surface to work on. So everything is set. I'm going to go in with my second setting powder. This is the Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder in the shade Honey, so it's way more yellow. So I'm going to grab a decent amount of this and we're going to bake. bronzer and blush and everything. I don't know why, but this looks so cute to me. <laughs> so I'm going to bronze using the Ace Beauty Bronze in Paradise palette. It looks like this. And I'm going to take the two darker shades. I'm going to use mostly this color. I am going to dip into this color, but not as much because it's very warm and red. And the last time I used it, it was just like a little too warm. And I'm just going to tap this in. The deeper I get into this this video, like this tutorial, the more I ask myself, like, why the heck was I so scared? <laughs> like, why the heck was I so scared, like, all those years ago to show my personality? But, you know, back then I had a really bad habit of, like, comparing myself to other people. Even now, I still find myself doing that. Like, I, especially as, I, as I'm getting older, I'm like, man, like, I, I should be here. I should be doing this. It's really easy when you're in this, like, space where, you know, like everybody has like their life out there to, to, to see. It's really easy to compare yourself to other people. But I feel like I'm slowly starting to come out of that mindset, become comfortable with where I'm at in life and, you know, appreciate all that I'm doing at this time or all that I'm being given at this time. Like realizing that this is a marathon, not a race, and on top of that, not everybody blooms at the same time. You know what I mean? Like everyone's different. We all have our, our, our timing. All of it is like properly and specifically timed for each of us. We can't, you know, rush that process. I really like this bronzer. Like I like the shade of this like mixture right here. And I'm just gonna go over the edges just to really make sure that that's not like too, you know, crazy. I feel like it's so easy for me to go like wild with bronzer because <laughs> I, I just love it so much that it's just like more more yay give me all the bronzer i'm gonna go in with this ace beauty blush in paradise palette i'm gonna use i'm gonna use these two colors right here mix those two colors well actually no i'm white <laughs> i'm gonna just use this one i want more of like a pink look for my blush so i'm just gonna use that one the other one is kind of like peachy, and I don't, I don't really want peachy today. I want, I want pink.
so that's good. Take this blush in just a tad bit more. That's it for the face. I'm gonna go ahead and figure out what I'm gonna do with my eyes. Go back in with our Beauty Blender Concealer. And I'm just gonna add a small amount, just like that. And I'm gonna go in with a what brush that I want. You know, I really thought that I was going to have like a hard time doing this, like a, a talk through. Mostly because like when I'm doing my makeup, I'm very like in the zone. This is very like therapeutic for me. So I thought I was gonna have a hard time. So I'm kind of surprised at myself that I'm like kind of like falling into this really easily. I've always enjoyed that about myself though. I feel like I adapt to situations pretty, pretty easily. My problem is that I have to force myself to change. Like I have to force myself to be like un in uncomfortable situations to get the experience. But once I do, like I, I usually tend to adapt pretty easily. I need to do my brows and I need to put on a lash. So let's do brows next. I'm using my precisely of my brow pen. Ooh, because this one's my favorite right now. I like how I can use this pencil over foundation. Because you guys know I always do like my brows um, after foundation. This one is perfect. Like you can do your brows over your foundation and the pencil actually shows up. And it's super thin. Gimme Brow, and this one is in shade number five, I believe, which is just like a brow gel. It's like a tinted one, so it'll give a little bit extra color to the brows. <laughs> My brows are huge. <laughs> like I have really like wide brows. I get that from my mom. I wish I had my mom's brows. She's like the sickest brows. Like her brows are just, whoa. I'm gonna also have my little beauty marks. I actually have like natural beauty marks. They just always get covered in like my foundation and stuff. So now I'm gonna go in with the Be Perfect Palette Pencil in the shade beige and I'm just gonna add that to the waterline. That's on using Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara for the lashes. So I have a super fun pink gloss here. Yeah, that's cute. Cute. I'm just gonna do a little light pink one over it to lighten it. Right in the center. That's cute. Mm-hmm. I like it. Okay. I'm gonna go in with Oh Darling from MAC. And just go right in here. But yeah, 
yeah, that's it for the look. I just kind of kept it fresh. I'm low-key wanting to put these lashes back on. Nah, I think that's a little too much. I'm just gonna wait for the call to start and then I'll be back to like let you guys know um, how it goes and um, to do my intro and outro. <laughs> guys so I'm all done with the zoom meeting it went really well at least I think it did <laughs> so um, yeah that's pretty much it for this hair and makeup tutorial I did add a lash last minute these are the Globe Academy lashes and the style of material girl from my girl Kiki Adams yeah that's pretty much it for this hair and makeup tutorial I'm filming this last part using my iPhone camera because I gotta put my camera back on its tripod and everything and I was using the tripod for the Zoom meeting so I'm gonna move the tripod back over to where it was my filming space and then I gotta put my camera back on there and do all this other stuff so oh, my camera's right here so I figured I'd just do the outro <laughs> I'm gonna try and do more of like these like talk through tutorials of course I hope you guys enjoyed I'm sorry that it took so long to get to this point of doing a talk through and on top of that it's not even like a really like intricate look it's just something super still glam but very like easy so next time i definitely got to do like something more like on the dramatic side i'm still kind of like giddy over the, the call and stuff so don't mind me but i hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial don't forget to like comment and subscribe and yeah i love you and hopefully i will see you in the next one